Uh, so it finishes Aston Villa nil, Manchester United nil. Let's just confirm uh, how that makes things look uh, within the table for Villa. Uh, they are fifth level on points with Chelsea. More on Chelsea a little bit later on. It is looking like uh, those three you feel they will pull away from the chasing pack. Meanwhile, look where Manchester United sit. Going into the international break, just eight points from their opening seven matches. They sit 14th. Uh, this is what Ten Hag had to say uh, after the game. He said, it's the fourth clean sheet this season. You can see we had very good organisation and togetherness. There was good character and good spirit as a team, determined, uh, resilient. Uh, keep an eye on this one for us is uh, Frank LeBeouf. We'll hear from Frank uh, in a moment. Craig, is there any way of selling this that going to Villa Park and considering the quality that Aston Villa have shown is a good place to come away with a point? Well, no, it wasn't one of United's worst performances. I'll give you that. It wasn't brilliant, but it wasn't one of the worst. Villa were flat from the other night. They were poor, uh, but they got a pass. I mean, Villa's not really the story here. Uh, he broke a record today. Did you know that? Another? No. That's the worst ever start by Manchester United in the Premier League. Wow. So he broke a record. Do you know whose record he broke? His own. Go on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, uh, in all its glory. He, he broke his own record from last year. Now, if any of us and all the cronies that are meeting on Tuesday yeah. in London, apparently, uh, don't make a decision that everyone knows they should make, maybe you'll get a third chance to break that record again. Wow. Because what's the point? We're in an international weekend. One game's not going to save them. They've got a drop Villa against a Villa side that were flat and out in their feet after that wonderful night against Bayern. Uh, Johnny Evans, fantastic. I mean, if they could all at least have his will to try and win, uh, maybe they would have at least a few more points. But to say that, oh, another clean sheet, after losing the amount of goals they did last week, after losing the amount of goals they did in Porto, after signing all these players in the summer and leaving them on the bench, you know, some of the signings have been absolutely horrendous. Hoyland hasn't worked out, obviously. We've talked about Zitzi. My God, he's never a Man United player. And mm -hmm. Matthias De Ligt, he's just come in and he's looked like a, he's looked like a shambles. Uh, there is no surviving this job for Eric Ten Hag. So what is the point in <laughs> kicking the can down the road for another two months, another two weeks, another till Christmas, till January? What's the point? I mean, when, when, when they meet in London, Brailsford, Barada, Wilcox and Dan Ashworth and the, whoever's there, come, what are they going to say? We, well, we, we, we have a, oh, what was it they said in the summer? Oh, we haven't got anybody else. We haven't, oh, poor old man, we haven't got anybody else. We'll just stick with old Eric because maybe we'll get lucky and things will change. I mean, how stupid was that? Yeah. So, you know, even if they won today, the decision should not have changed. They have a big meeting and they have to make a big decision uh, after that meeting wh how this club is going to go forward because it's not going to go forward under Eric Ten Hag in a positive manner. It, it, it's as simple as that. But they won't. They'll stick with it. Listen. Do you think so, Shaq? Yes. I, I, and I, I, look, hold up. Let, let me just see. I thought he should have gone last season. And I've felt ever since the FA Cup final, there has been this effort to find reason to stick with Eric Ten Hag. You win the FA Cup final... Fine, I give you that. I still think you should have separated with Eric Ten Hag then. But they use the FA Cup final as an excuse to keep him on. The excuse this time is, is going to be, listen, we stifled an Aston Villa that just beat Bayern Munich. And therefore, that's enough. Again, I, I, I'll mm. say, I do not agree with it one iota. Do you think they've embarrassed I, themselves into I, I, having to keep him? Consistently, you've heard all... for. All of last season through the start of this one, every excuse, the, a manufacturing of excuses or reasons to keep Ten Hag. None of them I agree with, but there has been this effort to find reason to keep him. And this gives them reason. This result gives them reason to keep him, which is why I say, I bet after the international break, we're here talking about Eric Ten Hag and maybe breaking another record. Wow, it, it, it's incredible. And what, and as Craig mentioned, the, the team selection today is very much highlighting how poor the transfers that have been made 
uh, of, that have come in. Xerxes on the bench. Obviously, you've got Evans, you've got Maguire starting. De Ligt is on the bench. Lindelof, it, Martinez Anthony's on the bench. On the bench. Anthony, it, it, it's in, it, it's yeah. a complete and utter indictment on what's been going on off the pitch and on it for Manchester United over recent months. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. And what we see with the, the team selection, the way they play, uh, make me think that they, there is somebody up there, I don't know, somewhere, protecting Ten Hag every time he's in a real danger. The FA Cup trophy uh, postponed his, uh, uh, the fact that he would, could have been fired. And today, that point, um, coming, not coming from nowhere, because I, I would be more... Um, uh, harsh, I would say, to, towards towards Aston Villa because I think they've been very poor. Maybe they were tired than Manchester United, but but it's like that point again is going to postpone um, um, uh, seeing Ten Hag leaving uh, Manchester United. It's it's appalling what we see, the way they, they play, the way they, they're not capable of defending well. Even if they keep the clean sheet, they could have been they could have they could have struggled and conceded goals. Uh, the way that he, they, they want to attack and do some stuff doesn't make any sense to me. It's not Manchester United. It's not the Manchester United that I've known and I've been successful toward the uh, long, long period. So we are nowhere near it. But everything, every time that you feel, OK, that's the end of it. It's going to be it's going to be sacked. Uh, uh, they're going to get somebody else. It's like there is, again, somebody there. Hmm. You know, I, I'm, with, I'm always with the board Say, well, it's hard to find somebody else. Who's going, to, uh, who's going to take charge of a team like that with so many problems? Nobody wants to do that, and nobody maybe is capable of doing that. But let's see Chelsea. Let's have a look at Chelsea. We never thought that it would be better than they... they or, or, yeah, they, they could do something better this season comparing to last season, especially with Enzo Maresca, who wasn't a top, top coach. But they do better. Yeah, they have their weaknesses. We're going to talk about it. But they do better. So I'm pretty sure that with the players that Manchester United have, they can do much better. And, uh, and we saw Bruno Fernandes, for example, going down, down, down every game mm. uh, since the beginning of the season. Yeah, he had a good free kick, but that's it. And the others, they start, they start following him. And again, it goes nowhere. And they also are under pressure here. Everyone who saw the Glazers is take, take, take. Dividends, take money out, up the debt, poor signings, and they spent money. Poor signings. And they also put money in, there is no doubt about that. They've talked about stadiums and training grounds, blah, blah, blah. But they were in place this summer. Maybe not all of them behind the scenes, but most of them were in place this summer when the transfer window ended. Yep. They are culpable <coughs> for some of these signings. Now, if these signings had been made under the Glazers, the United fans would have been dragging the Glazers' name through the mud, and rightly so. And yet, we have this new investment, not ownership, who, and I said it last week, thus far have proven that they are no better at the moment than making big decisions than the previous people that were making them. They're making poor decisions on the manager, they've brought in some poor signings once again, and they're sitting on their hands. And they're sitting on their hands, not because they know what they're doing, they're just going to hope it gets better. There is no sign this is going to get better. Might get a little, maybe they'll be mid-table. But whenever they play a better side I, in Europe or in the Premier League, they're going to struggle. They're going to struggle. So this, this meeting they have, I think, and what comes out of it, and there will be leaks, what comes out of it is huge. Because there's no way you can continue. There's no way they can go to London, four or five of them, and sit around the table and all agree that things are going well. Mm. There's not a snowball's chance that's going to happen. Hmm. It's whether they've got the gumption to reverse the horrendous decision they made in the summer by saying, we're going to keep Eric Ten Hag. Let's see how that unfolds. Yeah, and by the way, I, I think Ten Hag is giving Ineos and, and, the, and everybody every excuse to let go of it. Right. I saw uh, Mark Ogden before the game saying that um, Ten Hag suggested that he, he swapped out that Maguire and Evans were, were starting because he was rotating. <laughs> he said that. He likes a bit of rotation. Yeah, I, I like, mean... What, what needs rotating as a manager? Hold on. <laughs> this is the last game before the oh, international break. Yes. 
and you leave out, Marty, the two centre-backs that you signed, that you spent an awful lot of money signing. So, I, I, I mean, at, at this point, even Eric Ten Hag is not doing himself any favours and, and probably realising, yeah, listen, I've, I've kind of stayed execution here for a, for a couple of weeks because nothing, and, and I was very critical of the substitutions um, last time out and this just adds to it, it's, it's really difficult to make any sense of what Ten Hag is doing.